Pat Riley had a comment. He was in Los Angeles, and uh, he was on a dais. Um, he was there doing something with American Express. Wasn't he, McLevin? Yeah, it was a sponsored event. And do we know if he was asked who was the greatest basketball player of all time? I haven't found the question yet. But he did say Magic Johnson to him was the greatest player of all time. Magic is on the panel with him. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he can go, I, I would take, he's not taking LeBron. It feels like he was trolling LeBron. There's no way he's going to acknowledge LeBron. Yes, McLovin. I found the reaction to this a little harsh in the sense that people were like, what are you, crazy, Magic Johnson? There was a time where a lot of people thought Magic Johnson might be the greatest of all time. Yeah. I think uh, young people have no idea what he was like as a player. But if you also go back to when he, he had to leave the NBA, he played on the Dream Team, he came back in the All-Star game and was the MVP. Who knows what Magic could have done in, in that time period there. But he did have five titles there. And there was a time, believe it or not, during the NBA Finals back in the early 90s where I was on a Chicago radio station, the score, and I said I would take Magic over Michael. And they thought that I, you know, what I said was blasphemous. And I said, I, I look, Magic to me is, is somebody unique. I know Michael is awesome. He's great. You can, you know, best player of all time, yes. But Magic played all five positions and won an NBA championship when they didn't have Kareem. I mean, I, Michael couldn't do that. M you know, there are things, obviously, that my, uh, Mike did that Magic couldn't. But I, there was a time when I, there was a debate there. Yeah, Paulie. Uh, Pat Riley went on to say LeBron, LeBron is the closest thing to Irvin that we've ever seen because of his size, his seat, speed, acceleration, vision going up and down the court. And he also says that there's a misinterpretation mis, uh, of uh, Magic's career that he couldn't score. He chose not to score. He said Magic could have been a 30-point game guy if he chose to. Yeah, but he was so good with his handle, and he became a, a, a better – he was a set shooter. He wasn't a jump shooter, but he could still score. Um, and you're right. He chose not – he didn't need to. But when he did need to, he put up 42 on the 76ers in, in the championship game. Um, yes. That was so brutal. That was so unfair because Kareem was hurt. The 76ers yeah. were finally going to win a title. Little Andrew Perloff I mean, look, cried. Magic Johnson had seasons in his prime. 24 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, and a block. I'm surprised, though, that he only had 7 assists. I'm sorry, uh, 12, 12 assists. Okay. And uh, 7 rebounds. Yeah. My bad. 24 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds, 2 steals. Yeah. He was another guy like Bird who played the passing lanes well. He wasn't a great defender, but he played the passing lanes really well. Yeah, Paul. He also led the league in steals twice. Yeah. Yeah, McLeod. It feels a little like how you've said that people don't understand Kareem's greatness. Yeah. I'm not sure. If, if it's about titles, why isn't Kareem in there with six? And six regular season MVPs. That that we all of a sudden, we move right to Jordan because he's got six titles. Kobe can't be on the same level. LeBron can't be on the same level. Nobody can be on the same level. They don't have the same number of titles. Well, Kareem does. But we don't allow him into the club there. To me, I... I, I think you can look at Magic being underrated and Kareem being underrated. But a lot of that happens. It's just Jordan's legacy, aura, persona uh, is so big that, it, it, it you know, we tended to forget how great some uh, players were. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.